I'm so excited to be here with you all. And hi, Delilah. Hello, Deborah. You have your video on. See, when I do these, these classes live on topics that I think are interesting, I never really know if they're interesting to you too. And I was at the beach the other day, just to give you a little bit of backstory on this phrase. It's probably going to be my new catchphrase now. You heard it here first. Pretty with purpose. Here I am at the beach with a girlfriend, just having a beautiful, restful day in nature. A bald eagle hung out about 45 feet away from us. It was just divine. And Deborah says, hi, Rachel and Radiant people. Hey, Kim. Great to have you all here. And a lot of times when I go in nature, that's where I recharge my batteries and I actually get really creative and think about different things to share and talk about. So that, you know, you don't get bored with the same old, same old. Okay, yeah, you have to use a moisturizer. You definitely should be using sunscreen every day on the high real estate areas, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I could talk about that stuff all day long. But really the reason you're here on the School of Radiance podcast and you hang out with me through one-on-ones, join my tutorials, and also in my membership is because you know that I have a little bit of a different perspective on this whole beauty and radiance topic. So we're going to talk about pretty with purpose. What do I mean by that? And what does it really take to actually be pretty and beautiful? What does it really take? So just make sure that, uh, just let me know that you can hear me and see me perfectly okay. And uh, just a little behind the scenes, I'm going to be switching up my recording space here soon so that I don't have to deal with, you know, the power going out every week if there's, if it's windy out. <laughs> literally on a 20 acre farm. I love it. It's really low EMF here. I can see the lake right there. It's, it's just beautiful. Great place to uh, get creative and all that. All that goodness. So first of all, before we get into this deeper topic of pretty with purpose, I just warmly am so grateful for each and every one of you here because I know that you're curious about some of these deeper layers to beauty, not just looking pretty in a picture or in a video or, or all of that on surface level. It's like, how can we truly be our most beautiful selves in the way that we present? And I had a, a lovely consultation with Lisa yesterday and we have Alice, Andrea, Cami, Deborah, Deborah, Delilah, Katerina, Kim, Patricia, Sylvia, Tamara, Kelly, many more. And those of you who are catching the replay. And I, I really picked up on something in my one-on-one -on -one session with Lisa, where she wanted information on skin guidance. She just turned 64 and uh, has a bit of a limited budget, which a lot of my clients and patients have had between the ages of 60 to 94. They're retired. They're on a pension. I work with people with all sorts of different backgrounds and lifestyles and choices and family lives and work lives and experiences and and insights, uh, varying degrees of where people are on what I like to call the biohacking spectrum. And so for Lisa, it was about coming up with an affordable, cost-effective, but still really giving her the results that she wanted to help her skin be healthier and to look her best. Now, there were a couple key things that I picked up on her that were free because the angle for her was, you know, what are the as much free things as I can give you as possible? That was my angle for her to support her. Hey, Sylvia. And I noticed a couple of things that I realized I haven't actually done a show on or a class on or a podcast on. And posture goes without saying, but there's some interesting nuances with posture and why you might have poor posture that you might not have thought about. And also how your work can impact your eyes and also the lines between the brows and your facial expressions. So we're going to start with the eyes. We're going to go top down here. Now, for me, when I'm in the clinical setting and performing rejuvenation and non-surgical approaches, I don't wear contacts. I actually wear my glasses. I actually wear my blue light Viva Ray's glasses with my prescription in them. Because what I find is if I have shown up to work to perform rejuvenation and, you know, I'm about six inches away from someone's face when I'm 
up in their face and doing different things around their body or their neck or their hands or their arms and really close. So that requires me to kind of hunch over a little bit and really focus on what I'm doing. And I find that for me, when I have to focus on what I'm doing, contacts aren't the best because I kind of have to like squint and actually take an uh, extra energy and effort to focus on something. And now I'm working with millimeters of, of things to avoid veins and get things placed just right. So there's no bruising and things like that. really paying attention to detail. So I'm about six inches away from someone's face. And that requires a lot of focus with my eyes. And I just find wearing contacts, I'm squinting a little bit more and it takes me a little extra time to focus on that little millimeter of space I'm working with when I'm performing rejuvenation. So glasses feel much better. And that's one of the feedback I had for Lisa uh, is to, because she works on people as well, is to not wear contacts to work and actually wear glasses and, and bonus points if they're blue light blocking glasses to reduce LEDs that are typically in the workplace for lighting because LEDs have taken over. Halogen is full spectrum light. It is better for us. So if you can source those halogen bulbs in your home and your office space, that's best, but it's difficult to get that these days. So LEDs are pretty much everywhere. So protect the eyes, protect the skin around the eyes from the damaging blue light, which we get every day, that's actually even more damaging than the light that we get outside from the sun. So I'm sure many of you have heard me talk about that, but you might not have thought about the fact that when you're focusing on something to actually maybe wear glasses, and some of you may be wearing you know, progressive lenses and things like that to help you focus even further, that's great. Also wearing loops at work. I've been fitted for these loops that you'll see you know, surgeons wearing when they're performing a surgery. It helps them maintain good posture so they can see what they're doing. But if this is you and you're wearing contacts to work, you're in the aesthetic space, medical aesthetic space, lash and brow space, or you're in the hairstyling space, then this is actually something to consider or if, say, you do nails for your job or anything that requires you to really focus and spend a lot of attention on detail and you're working in a very kind of small area and you have to really get up in there, switch to glasses. And the reason why is with contacts and what I noticed in, in Dear Lisa was her movements. She was really kind of focusing inwards. And, and think about this for a second when you're focusing on something. What are you doing with your face? Well, you're likely squinting your eyes, which over time is going to result in eyelid laxity, hooded upper eyelids, crow's feet, lower eye bags. We really actually just want to keep our facial muscles as relaxed as possible. And there's an additional tip that I'm going to talk about uh, with micro gestures. This is really, really powerful, actually, when you figure this out and and it ties into the pretty with purpose situation because it's going to make you a more effective communicator. So I'm going to get to that in just a second, but we really want to avoid squinting as much as possible. So if it's sunny outside, maybe put on those sunglasses, pull down that visor while you're driving. If you're outside in the sunshine, maybe get some shade, wear a hat, obviously always wear your skincare and your sunscreen on your eyelids. And I have some great sunscreens that are mineral only, and they're not going to make your eyes sting. So don't forget about the sunscreen on your eyelids. It's really important. But reduce squinting at all costs. If you find you're squinting, go to your optometrist, get your eyes checked, and while you're getting your eyes checked, um, your optometrist can actually give you insights as to the health of your eyes. Because if there's been vision changes, there can be some blood sugar things happening. Um, also, I chatted with the surgeon that I work with. He's an oculoplastic surgeon. And I asked him, you know, what about oxalates? How do high levels of oxalates in the body impact eye health? And there's actually a retina disease called oxalosis that he shared with me. That's actually a disease of the retina. And what oxalates do in the body is they form these little crystals. And when you eat foods like kale and spinach and foods that are high in oxalic acid, you can actually just easily, easily look this up. I did write a research paper on which foods are really high in oxalates so that you can avoid them. But there's actually legitimate things that can happen to your eye health. So do pay attention to maybe why you're squinting. The other thing we do while we're squinting and we're focusing is we furrow our brows. 
We're really getting in there. We're really focusing. We're, we're intense with our intention, with what, what we're doing, whatever we're doing, whether it's reading a book, whether it's doing our nails, anything. Just notice what you're doing while you're doing things and what you're doing with your face. This comes to actually having more, this speaks to having more of a, an awareness about your body. And a lot of time women can actually kind of even evacuate their bodies because caregivers, we're looking after this, we're looking after that. You know, same with guys too. We really want to focus on what is our body doing when we're not really paying attention to it. Say for example, right now, are you feeling relaxed? Are you feeling happy? What are you doing with your face? Are your hands on your face and you're holding your face like this, stretching out some of the ligaments to your cheek and eye area? I see a lot of people in interviews doing this. Or when they're talking, they put their, you know, thumb under their chin and their fingers on their cheek, and then they kind of rest their face on their fingers. And believe it or not, this can actually stretch out a ligament here. So pretty much just don't touch your face. <laughs> That's also going to help you have uh, reduced breakouts and things like that. And maybe even like move off some of your sunscreen that you apply there and mess up your makeup and things like that. So these are kind of just like really random little things that are free that you can do. So I'm just going to summarize when you're doing something and you are intent on performing something, notice if you're squinting and notice if you're furrowing your brows and also notice if you're raising your eyebrows up and also if you're clenching your teeth, if you're clenching your jaw, you're biting down, you're kind of grinding, you're going to be contributing to hypertrophy of your masseter muscles, which rest at the angle of the jaw right in front of your ear. So if you place your hand on that muscle group that's right in front of your ear and bite down, you're going to feel that muscle pop out. And individuals who are going through really stressful times in their lives, they typically display hypertrophy or more muscle that's formed in the lateral aspect of the jaw. And for women, this isn't good because this creates a more masculine look to the face. The lower face, the jawline gets wider and we experience more jowls. We experience sagging of the skin. So that's also something that's really interesting to consider. They might not have thought about. So for guys, actually having hypertrophy of the masseter muscle is, is quite attractive and it looks very masculine. So for sure, guys using those chomping things, but for women, don't just keep your jawline relaxed, keep your face, keep your whole body, keep your energy, keep your moods and emotions calm, relaxed, and at peace. And this will actually display on your face. So another free tip, and, and let me know in the comments if you have any um, comments or questions around that. I'm going to talk about the importance of micro gestures now, and then we're going to get into posture. And then we're going to get into this whole pretty with a purpose thing. Cause I think it's really interesting that I've never once heard anybody talk about. And now you're going to start hearing other people talk about it. And you'll know that pretty with a purpose started here first. You were on uh, this recording. So micro gestures are actually really powerful in regards to communication. We all know those individuals who are really expressive. And when they're talking with someone, they're really raising their eyebrows up, they're furrowing their brows, they're very active with their lower face, with you know, pulling down the corners of the mouth to show, hmm, that's interesting. Or, ooh, I don't know about that. All those things, what they're doing is they're they're utilizing your facial muscles. And what actually makes us look older are overactive facial muscles. That's what Botox, Zeoman, Dysport, Nuceva, Juveau, Revance, that's what these all do. These are neuromodulators. And they disrupt the message from the nerve to the muscle in certain areas. So when we're doing micro gestures, it's almost like mimicking if you've had a treatment like that done. And I would also beg to question that it might actually help your treatments last a little bit longer if you get into the habit of utilizing micro expressions in your communication. So when you're communicating with someone and you just do a little bit of an eyebrow raise or a little bit of a squint or, hmm, it's interesting, just micro gestures, it's actually going to be more powerful in your communication. You're literally going to be received better because when you actually do respond and you do react, and even though it's micro, it's going to be more powerful. 
Sylvia says, awesome. You're sharing all those tips. Totally agree with all that. These, these are just things that because I've been studying this concept of beauty and radiance and what makes some people more beautiful than others, regardless of their age, regardless of how much money they have or to spend on rejuvenation, everybody can do these things and they're completely free. Now I'm drinking my water with my Analima wand, filtered structured water for the win, everybody. Let me know what kind of water you're drinking. Better not be tap water. So we talked about micro gestures and how important they are in communication and how they're actually going to tell your brain that you're more relaxed, that you're more chilled out. And when it comes to things like perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause, it's important that we do keep our stress levels lower and we live a more peaceful life with more balanced emotions. Stress is a sign of being alive, everybody. It comes down to how you manage that stress. Are you consuming adaptogens like what Organifi makes? Are you clearing out toxins? Are you eating enough protein? Are you consuming antioxidants, omega, collagen, and protein? Those are really great things to supplement. Same, same with things like vitamin D and melatonin. They're really supportive of the body and because they help to combat free radicals, toxins that we get exposed to day in and day out. But the toxins can also be energetically and emotionally. I get into other strategies to deflect, defer those types of things from impacting us a little bit more in the membership. That's where I'm more comfortable to share some of the practices that I do and that I've seen really successful people do who are, in my opinion, successful because they're also radiant and what those pieces look like. So if you're curious about the membership, just reach out and uh, book a call with me and I'm happy to give you some more information and see if it's right for you. The next thing I want to talk about is posture. Now, when you look at someone and their shoulders are slumped over, they come across as a little bit more meek, maybe meek and mild. Oh, it's pretty windy. Cross your fingers, the power stays on, everybody. <laughs> oh, living in the woods. But when we have this posture to us, it does not relay confidence, does it? It relays not a lot of confidence. Now, would you rather buy a house from someone who has their shoulders back, their chest out, their chin up? Or would you rather buy a house from someone who's slumped over, disheveled, you know, doesn't really pay a lot of attention into the details of how they look? Do you think they're going to be paying attention to your deal? This is where pretty with a purpose comes into play. It's really having more of this awareness of literally every part of you, body, mind, spirit, and energy. And when we pay attention to these things, it's, it's almost like you're getting to know yourself even more. And there are some other things that I'm not going to get into here, but uh, really important stuff from the energetic, the emotional, and the spiritual side of things that are really helpful in this regard to focus on and spend attention on so that we can better understand ourselves and maybe why we respond and react in certain ways in certain situations with certain people. The more you know, the more you know, but you also don't know what you don't know. So with posture, ladies and gentlemen, this is a free thing. Keeping your chin up. If you're looking at your phone, take your phone up. Don't do this. This hump on the next situation is one of the most unattractive things that I see when people are walking. And I love to notice people's walk. I walked runway last year. That was a lot of fun. Uh, fit all the clothes, which was like, what? What am I doing here? I'm like the regular person on the runway. I mean, it was so much fun. And behind the scenes before I walked runway uh, a couple times that night, I was training with these professional fashion week models that professionally walk the runway. And I, actually behind the scenes, a number of them were nurses, acupuncturists, and also um, just in the health space and in the beauty space. And I would also beg to question that these women were in their 40s still walking the runway alongside 20 something year olds. How can that be? Right? It's because they are pretty with purpose, right? They, they understand posture, they understand a great walk, but they also understand the importance of being healthy and looking after themselves. So it's, it was interesting to observe that, but getting back to posture, this can start to feel really weird. If you just shrug your shoulders up and back and you're almost kind of activating your lats. 
The lats are the muscles that are on the on your backside that sort of begin from your axillary armpit area and they go about midway down your back. So these muscles get activated and then you are pulling your shoulders back and your elbows. Imagine you have a rod behind the small of your back and your elbows are actually resting behind that rod. That's actually where your elbows should be when you're standing, not forward slumped over showing you know, that you don't have confidence or that you never learned about posture, but shoulders up and back and your elbows back. And this looks fantastic for both the ladies and the gentlemen. And this can just seriously upcharge, upregulate and elevate the way that you look that's totally free. And it's your posture. The other thing to consider is, you know, maybe why are you slumping forward all the time? What's going on in your life? What are you feeling? What are you feeling in your heart? And that's, that's really impacting the way that you look and the way that you feel. One second here, just had a tech stuff happen. <laughs> Of course, of course. All right, we are, we're back. Okay, so just think about for a second when you are going about your day, you're walking to your car, you're walking to your kitchen, you are walking to work, you're at the grocery store, just start to pay attention to what exactly is going on with your body. What is your posture doing? So for those individuals who are kind of like slumped over a little bit and have really poor posture, there can be two reasons. Either number one, they never learned about good posture or number two, they've dealt with a lot of trauma in their life and they've been hurt and they're literally hunched over to kind of protect their heart. And we don't want to keep our you know, our beautiful love all for ourselves. We want to be sharing it with the right people in the right situations at the right time in the right way, of course. And so having your shoulders back and elbows back and your chest forward, your, your bosom elevated, if you will, and in your chin up a little bit, this is really going to change your look. And again, I mentioned that this is, this applies to the ladies and the gentlemen. So having confident posture is going to make you look better, but it's also going to be so much better for your neck and your spine as you age. So again, we're getting back to this concept of pretty with purpose. All of these different things that we can do to actually look more beautiful do have a purpose. We're not just doing it to look pretty. We're actually doing it to slow the aging of our eyes. And if we are squinting, maybe get your eyes checked and see if there's been some vision changes not clenching your teeth, which is going to be disruptive of your teeth and your bite and lead to actually wearing down of your teeth and aging faster to your jawline. Maybe you get some headaches too. Keeping your shoulders up and back is also going to keep your blood flow to your brain better. It's going to be more conducive to lymphatic drainage. Uh, just a little tip throughout the day. If you're kind of like feeling a little tired, just kind of massage into your neck a little bit, just above your clavicles. You'll feel a little sore spot. That's actually how you can access your vagus nerve. Because what I find through just observing people, not only observing their skin, but the way that they, they engage with others, the way that they move through life, the way that they manage their emotions, it really does actually come down to their nervous system. So my heart goes out to people who show up in sort of like this more frumpy and slouched way that they're probably dealing with something. So if you come across an individual like that, just show them a little extra love. And if you come across someone who does have really great posture, who has an awareness of what they do with their body. They're very intentional with their words. They're kind of slower with their words and more selective with their word choice. This could probably very well be a sign of someone who's intelligent and has an awareness of their body and could actually maybe be a better friend, a better partner, or a better work colleague. But notice these things in your family, especially for those of you who have kids. Notice you know, maybe why your daughter is slumped forward all the time, looking down on her phone. Does she have FOMO, fear of missing out on seeing all her friends on social media do this and look this way and wearing this and has that, you know, there's so many things that we can read into it. 
and I'm not saying these things to get you in your head too much and overanalyze these things, but just have an awareness that these things really indicate a lot about someone. So free things, stop squinting, stop furrowing your brows, stop clenching your jaw and stop looking down on your phone and start maybe wearing glasses, getting your eyes checked and improving your posture. That's really, really key. And I'd like to open it up for some questions here. So the pretty with purpose situation is we're doing these little adjustments to ourselves. And if you think that this is really impactful information, you've seen nothing yet. We go way deeper in the School of Radiance membership on these sorts of topics and much, uh, much deeper. So being more quiet isn't being weak. If you've ever seen the movie Drive with Ryan Gosling, he's a professional stunt driver, but then he also drives for people, you know, Robin Banks and doing heists and stuff that they shouldn't be doing. But how he operates is really interesting. He's very quiet and there's uh, one and very direct. He has very clear boundaries about how he operates. You know, I'm going to pick you up. You have a five minute window. If you're outside of that five minutes, you know, you're on your own. So he establishes very clear boundaries right off the bat, which, which is fantastic. We should all be doing this more. And then when someone tries to challenge him or call him out, uh, one of the, you know, big gang bosses, he says, you haven't done this much, have you? And uh, actually Ryan just hangs up the phone and doesn't even respond to that. So that's, uh, that's something really interesting. It's just, it's an interesting movie to watch the movie drive to see the tension that builds between the main character, Ryan Gosling and the female character and what they do with their communication. It's very poignant communication and it isn't, you know, word vomit. People are thinking before they're speaking basically, which is also a sign of maturity. So, you know, what, what was interesting about Ryan Gosling's character, he did bad things in the movie. I mean, he murdered a couple people, which is terrible. Don't do that. Uh, but he did big tasks and he was humble. And at the, at the end of the day, he overcame his adversaries by being one step ahead. This also gets into how you can utilize these different concepts of starting to be aware of yourself to then develop an awareness of other people and read between the lines and pick up on things about them that they might not be telling you. Like, for example, if, if people are overly charming, they might have all of these things dialed in as well so that they're perceived a certain way, but they're going to be just like a little too charming, you know, but the, those individuals who have good posture, they carry themselves well, and they're actually a little bit more quiet. And that can be actually a sign of someone who has done maybe a little bit more inner work, but the being one step ahead is, is a part of negotiation. So fewer words are sometimes better than others, less overly expressive gestures are not as good as utilizing micro gestures, but there's also a fine balance with this, especially if you have an avoidant attachment style and you withdraw a lot. And if this is the first time hearing about attachment style, uh, this is something that's been studied for a really long time and there's a bit of a spectrum of it. And this is a topic we're talking about in the membership coming up. So micro gestures for the win, for slowing aging, and say, for example, you've had neuromodulators um, like Botox, Xeom and Dyspore, the other brands that are available, and remember what they felt like and kind of mimic that and maintain that. One of the things I don't like uh, seeing is when someone is overly injected and they can't move their face or relate any expression that I also find can hinder someone's beauty. So here they are doing something in hopes of reducing signs of aging and looking more beautiful, but it actually can hinder their beauty because they can't be expressive. And so to have a really great neuromodulator treatment, it's half art, half science. So always look at who's doing your, <laughs> your treatments. The other th people I want to highlight are Audrey Hepburn and Angelina Jolie. I love to look at these beautiful women and the effect that them utilizing very specific word choice, gestures, body language, and posture and poise, the impact that it's had on their careers, on their community, their presence, their achievements, family, serving, 
And I also heard a couple of rumors that uh, <laughs> Audrey Hepburn was doing some covert work. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. So different situations and opportunities can arise uh, when you are at a different level of intelligence and having an awareness of yourself and just being very aware of your body and what your body's doing or fidgeting and things like that. If you see someone who fidgets a lot and you know has a lot of like voice ticks and things like that, that can actually be a sign that um, they're traumatized, their nervous system shot, and they might not be trustworthy. Beauty is an asset and being pretty with purpose is something that I'd love for you all to do today with these, with this, with these free tips. All right. So I'm going to get to questions here. So please, I warmly invite different questions here. Ask your questions, comments, things that you found interesting. Sylvia, agree. Posture is huge. Recently found out that glutes and hip flexors are not engaged and really affect posture. Yeah, absolutely. When you're standing up straight, you're going to be actually keeping your hip flexors a little bit more stretched out. And when you're slumped over and you're sitting a lot, your hip flexors are going to be contracting and then they'll get kind of jammed up and really tight. So good posture, good stretching is going to keep your hips open. There's also a whole other topic of what happens and why you might have closed up hips um, energetically and also things that you might have experienced through childbirth and all sorts of things. The body tells us so much. The way that we hold our body, the way that we guard different parts of our body, like poor posture and guarding our heart. That's also something too, or, or slumped over because our gut doesn't feel very good. Well, if your gut is giving you problems, you're having gas, you're having bloating, and you, you're just kind of uncomfortable, then you got to get your gut right. You have to stop eating foods that are contributing to inflammation. So the Viome gut test that's on my biohacking page at the school of radiance.com makes that process really easy to figure out which foods are, are helpful for you to eat. Reading someone's body language and sensing their field really helps you know what's going on. And the more quiet we are, the better we are going to be at observing and listening. Observing and listening, ladies and gentlemen, observing yourself, observing others, and listening to your own internal thoughts, being in positive emotional states. If you notice just these negative thought forms, where are they coming from? Maybe you need to pray and read your Bible. Maybe you just need to get outside and chill and run around and move your body. And we really have to pick ourselves up out of negative emotional states and negative thought forms because they're just going to bring you down and lower your vibe. You're not going to be pretty. You're not going to be beautiful. You're not going to be radiant. If all you have going on upstairs is negative self-talk, like you're not good enough, right? The other pretty with purpose here thing is... When we're more quiet, we're more calm, we're more regulated, we're less inflamed, we're more beautiful, the more likely people are going to be to open up to us. And when we listen, this is really important. This is really important, especially if you're in a relationship or in a marriage. One of the women's key roles is to provide a sense of peace and nurturing. And with that comes listening. That's really important too, instead of, again, the word vomiter. <laughs> we all know them. That just talk a million miles a minute. You can't get a thing in edgewise. And you know, I kind of feel bad for those people because there's some stuff going on in the background in their operating systems. But listening and being quiet and still regulating yourself actually allows you to read other people much better. And sensing it like uh, what Sylvia said, absolutely. Sensing in their field really helps you know what's going on. The more clear you are, the more intuitive you're also going to be. And a lot of you here are empaths. You're highly empathic and you're also pretty intuitive. Intuitive empaths is a pretty unique group of people that we can kind of read the room. And also our, our instincts and our intuition is a little bit more clear. And what I'd love to talk about in the membership is how we can become even more clear so that we see life properly. We're not having errors of thought and negative emotional states impacting us both mentally, energetically, spiritually, and physically, but we're showing up in a different way and different opportunities are presenting themselves and we're happier. We're happier in our marriages and we're happier in our relationships. So the other thing about pretty with purpose 
is say, for example, you're in a relationship, you're in a marriage. What happens sometimes in a relationship or in a marriage? Oh, maybe you put on a little bit of weight. Maybe you don't go to the gym. Maybe you just don't put that little extra time and attention into wearing beautiful clothing. Maybe you're kicking it in athletic gear all the time. Same with the guys too. Maybe you're walking around with a shirt that should be ironed or steamed or stains on your pants or holes in your clothes, right? So it's always important that we're, we do put effort into ourselves and that we expect effort uh, from our partners too so that attraction is maintained and that little spark, that little fire, that little uh, flirtatiousness is maintained. So the pretty with purpose angle, as you can see, it, it really just permeates into so much of what we do personally with what we do with our work, our posture at our work, our focusing, what we're doing with our faces, but also in our personal lives to discern who to be friends with, because as an intuitive empath, or say, for example, if you have an avoidant type, you kind of hermit a bit too much. You're inside a little too much and you're guarding yourself. And what are you doing with your posture? Are you slumped over? Are you protecting your heart? Are you guarding your heart because you've been hurt? Or are you able to really kind of shine your light and your heart and your love to others because you've been doing the inner work and your body's on point and you're not toxic from toxins in our environment? You've heard me talk about toxins in air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, yeast, fungi, mold, parasites, heavy metals. These are all really important things to clear out physically, but also emotionally, spiritually, and energetically too. And Sylvia says, wouldn't doubt it. She's awesome. That's the, that's the comment on Audrey Hepburn. I adore Audrey Hepburn, even just from a really young age. Breakfast at Tiffany's was my favorite movie growing up until I realized she was a call girl. <laughs> and then the whole movie just got completely wrecked for me. I was like, oh my gosh, that's actually what she does uh, for a living is she's a call girl. But anyways, that's a whole other topic. Yeah, it's kind of one of the oldest um, forms of employment, uh, so I've been told. But anyways, uh, so I, I love her. My sister bought me this Audrey Hepburn DVD trio that I just binge watched all the time. I just loved uh, the way that she showed up and the way that she spoke and carried herself. And in some of her movies, she's a little bit more kind of flippant and out there and immature and, you know, makes decisions on a whim. So she plays different characters. But when you listen to her in interviews, she's very calm and she's very poignant with her words and also her gestures. And I can't remember where I heard that she actually did some uh, forms of intelligence work but I did hear this a long time ago. And then if you think of Angelina Jolie, like she's gone to Africa a whole bunch. She's done different things in different countries with the UN. I mean, imagine some of the things that they know and the circles that they're in and information and all that stuff. I, I kind of get a kick out of that stuff because uh, it's, it's been in my family a little bit. So it's interesting when I see these women that do things like that, but they are just so beautiful regarded as you know some of the most beautiful that we've seen on film actually same with um i mean marilyn monroe there were some other things but she did have this ability to just kind of turn on this power that she had this this beauty this magnetism and i remember reading an article on her that she, you know she'd be walking downtown and would kind of shell up a little bit, not be seen. And then she would just turn it on. And I would presume that it was related to her eyes, her smile, her gestures, her posture and her walk and her whole energy shift. So it just depends how you want to use that little tweak to better your lives and also help others feel more comfortable around you. And Sylvia says, agree totally. Even small things like real smile, heartfelt eye contact go a long way. Yes, and PIFAs in the athletic gear. I was hoping someone would pick up on the fact that wearing athletic gear all the time is actually not good for you because your body's absorbing all these different plastics in your clothing. So I am wearing this beautiful silk blouse. Love silk, love linen, love cotton. Those are primarily the main materials that I wear, as well as silver for blocking EMFs, actually. I wear uh, 
EMF protective clothing all day, every day, sleep in it, sleep in the bedding. And you can find those things on my biohacking page at the School of Radiance. Are there any other questions or comments or just things that you found interesting? I like doing these live calls because I get to see kind of what's resonating and maybe what you're finding more interesting or would like sort of a little bit more explanation on. But this concept of pretty with purpose, I just, I want you to sit with this today because it's, I think it's really interesting. This, this whole concept of being pretty, but with purpose, not just being pretty, you know, showing up, getting your makeup done, getting your hair done, but why are you doing it? Are you doing it because you feel you're worth it? Or are you not doing it because you don't feel like you're worth it? Like, I'm going to trigger some people here. Do you feel like you're not worth it because you are not at the weight that you want to be at or you feel too old? If you're feeling that, then I want you to like cancel, delete that because at no matter what age, no matter what type of body composition you have, you still have a heart. You still have a soul. You're still a person and you're always worth it to eat great foods, to exercise, to do your hair great, to put on your skincare and your makeup and care for yourself and learn how to care yourself in some of these more beautiful ways. All right. Well, there's no other questions or comments. I think that this is a great place to pause and I love you all so much. I'm going to share something um, that's just special for those of you who were here live. And if you'd like to join, if you're listening to the replay of this and you would like to join my next live recording on the podcast here, I am going to share a, a, a link in the description of this episode. You can join my newsletter and you're going to be able to get the invitations to this. It's also the registration to join my master classes is on the school of radiance.com. And here is a very special link for everyone to connect with me on. If we haven't connected, I know I've worked with, you know, most of you here as one-on-one -on -one clients who have joined my tutorials in the membership but if you're new or you're not sure if maybe the membership is right for you and you're curious to see if it's a good fit for you, I'd love to meet you. I'm not for everybody. And it's sort of this concept of casting your pearls before swine, because to really have deep lasting beauty and slow aging and, you know, have that pretty with purpose, uh, it, it takes a certain individual. So sometimes I just like to meet you first on a quick call to make sure that it's a good fit, that my energy expenditure is also going to be beneficial for you too. And you're going to be able to integrate and receive and do and take action. All right. So the link to book a call with me and to learn more is in the description of this episode. And for those of you who are here live, there's a special link there in the chat. I love you all so much. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. Hey, Elena, so proud of each and every one of you. Uh, for being here and Deborah and Tamara, you have been here the longest uh, working with me. So big shout out to those two women who, you know, it's been so beautiful to see your transformation. And if you're curious about what the transformation is like that I offer, um, check out Michelle's video over at the school of radiance.com and some of the things she's learned and uh, it might help you out too. Sylvia, have your spring classes started? When will you do the next one? Yes, spring skincare tutorials are happening now. And you can register for that over at theschoolofradiance.com. And then my next summer classes are also going to be starting up soon. So I'll be emailing out information on that. If you have any questions, be sure to send me a direct email, info at theschoolofradiance.com. Send me a direct message over social media, Instagram at Rachel Varga Official. And that's a wrap. I actually have to, uh, not have to, but I'm teaching another nurse right after this uh, in the med spa space as well. So if you're a practitioner also, I'd love to hear from you. Have a great day, everybody. Be pretty with purpose and you are worth it.